there are no inbuilt functions in MetaTrader 4 to identify when trades have changed. So perhaps a limit or stop order has converted to a trade or a trade's been closed. So the only option is to write all of the code yourself. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. On screen here, I have the code that I've written. I've written this as an indicator. You could put it inside an expert advisor if you like. Uh, because this is an indicator, first thing I've done is set property indicator chart window, but I won't be actually putting any indicators on screen. Then I've defined a structure here, OFX trade data, which I'm going to use to hold information about trades. Now, there's a lot more information about each trade than I have here. I've only created a few pieces of information that I want to track just for the demonstration. And I've added this one line here, a Boolean value for stale, and you'll see how I use that later. But these others are all information that will come from the trades. Then for monitoring the trades, I've created another structure, which again holds the ticket number, but then holds two pieces of this OFX trade data, the one that we've defined above. And that's so that I can hold the current value from the trade and the last value that we saw when this passed through earlier. And then finally, I've defined an array of this type OFX trade monitor. So I now have an array that holds a list of ticket numbers, the data that I've got from the trades and the data that we had from the trades last time we passed through the loop. On initialization, I call load trade data. This is one of my functions. And this is where I will be pulling in all of the trade information from the terminal. And then just in the on calculate, uh, and if you're putting this inside an expert advisor, this would be the on tick event. Or if you wanted to run a different frequency, you might use a timer or any other event that you like. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is update the trade data, which will update everything in that list of trades that I have. Then I'm just looping through this trade list of items. Uh, and I'm saying here, if the age data has an open time of zero, the only way that can happen is if there is no age data, then this must be a new trade. And then another test here, if the close time for the data is not equal to the age data close time, so if the close time has changed, then the ticket must have been closed. And then finally, in case there are closed trades, I just want to keep the array short. I don't want it to grow forever. So I'm just calling a, a routine to remove the closed trades. So now let's see the functions that I use to create that. Scroll down here. First, the load trade data function. And all of these functions use the current trade in memory. So firstly, I'm array resize G trade list to zero. This just cleans out any data that's in the trade list. So if I reinitialize this indicator at all, it will remove everything in that piece of memory. And I'm also setting spare buffer of 200 so that as the trade list grows, I don't have to keep calling memory and reallocating it each time. So this will create space for 200 items in that array, although there will be none there to begin with. Uh, then a standard loop, I'm looking at the total number of orders, looping through those. If I'm able to select that order, then I'm just calling this add trade data so now let's look at the add trade data function. All that is saying is that I'm getting an index which is the size of the trade list because I know that I want to add another one. So it is going to be the next element after the size of the trade list. And then I'm calling a second function that I've created called set trade data passing that index. Set trade data will take care of storing the information. But once I've added a new item, I want to set the age data to zero. You saw that I had a test earlier on age data. So I'm creating another variable of the OFX trade data type, calling that age data, initializing that with zeros, and then I'm assigning that to the age data value of this trade list. Let me just go back to the top and show that. The trade list is an array of trade monitor structures, and the trade monitor structure contains two variables of type OFX trade data. One is the current data and one is the age data. So I'm assigning an initialized to zero value to the age data. So let's scroll back down. So that was the add trade data. Then the set trade data. Uh, this gets past an index. So if the index is greater than the size of the trade list, which typically on an add it would be, 
then I'm just going to resize that array, uh, adding one more. So I'm resizing it to index plus one uh, and maintaining this 200 buffer. And then I'm assigning the ticket number from the order ticket. And then I'm filling the data element with yet another function, the new trade data. I've encapsulated all of this in new trade data because I may want to use it in other places. And instead of filling each element of data, I'm just going to call this one function and get a full structure back. And here's the new trade data. And all I'm doing there is assigning all of these values based on the current order in memory. And on the first pass through, I'm setting stale to false. Now, if we go back, you'll see that that was after the initial load. That was the load trade data, went through all of those functions. Then in the loop, I'm calling update trade data. So the update trade data function is what will be scanning the current trades that are in the terminal to see if there are any changes. First thing I'm doing is aging everything. And let me go to the age function here. This is very simple. I loop through everything in the array for i equals array size down to zero. And all I'm doing is assigning the value of the data element from the trade list to the age data element from the trade list. So I'm taking everything and putting it in the age column. And then I'm setting the stale value to true. So I'm saying at this point, everything has been moved into aged or copied into aged but I haven't reloaded those trades from the terminal. So I'm calling them all of that data is stale until I get that trade back from the terminal. So then in the update trade data, after aging all of the trade data, uh, the usual sort of loop, I'm reading the orders total, I'm scanning through all of these. And if you're running this on an indicator or an expert advisor, you might want to put more conditions for particular symbols or types of trades, but I'm just scanning everything here. Uh, then the order select function, selecting by position. And then I'm calling this find trade data function. Now, in my example here, this is a fairly simple linear search. It could be made faster, but the techniques for faster searching would be a, a topic on their own. So I'm just doing a simple linear search here, looping through my array of trade list items until I find one where the ticket number matches the current order ticket, and then I'll return that value. And if I don't find that, then I'm gonna return minus one from the find trade data. In the update trade data, first I'm doing a find trade data, that gives me an index. If the index is less than zero, that means that I've found a trade in the terminal that isn't already in my array, so it must be a new trade, so I'm gonna call the add trade data function, the same thing that was called during the load. If I do get an index, then I'm going to call set trade data, which will update that element at the index position with the newer data from the trade. And we've seen the set trade data here, which will simply assign data from this new trade data function. And at the same time, the new trade data says that the stale value is false. So as soon as I read a trade back from the terminal, I'll get the latest information for the trade and I will say that it's no longer a stale piece of information in memory. Now, that will be fine for all of the trades that are still open, but when a trade closes, it moves out of the current trades in the terminal and moves into history. And this order select mode trades won't find those trades that have been closed. So just to handle that, I'm now going back and this time I'm looping through my trade list. So. I had a trade there the last time I went through the loop, and now I want to look for trades that are in my array that I didn't find when I searched through the open trades. So I'm looking at my trade list, and here I'm only looking at trades where they are stale. Because if they're stale, that means I didn't see them on this first pass. I don't want to waste time looking at those trades again where I did find them. So I'm only looking at the trades that are marked as stale and then I'm doing an order select using the ticket number. Now this select by ticket method doesn't just look in current trades, it also looks in history. So this will find any trade given that ticket number. And as long as that's successful, then I'm just calling the set trade data again. So even if the trade's in history now, it will no longer be stale because I found the information and I've updated that element in the array. 
but if it has moved into or if it has been closed and it's in history, then it will now have a closed date where open trades don't have a closed date. Closed date is zero on an open trade. And last is the remove closed trades function. So here I'm first capturing the size of the G trade list array, and then I'm looping backwards through that list. So you can see I've got four int i equals size minus one counting down to zero. I'm doing this because as elements are removed, I, if I were moving upwards through the array, then I would skip over the next element. So by moving backwards from the top, I'm not missing any elements. So then I'm simply saying, if that element in G trade list, if the data close time is greater than zero, which means that it is closed, then I have an internal loop, which steps forward now through the array from that point and pulls each element of the array, one above, back down in the array. And then finally, in the array resize statement, I'm removing the last element of the array and reducing the size by one with that size minus minus. So inside each loop where the iterator int i changes, I'm looking for a closed trade and then using that for int j loop, I'm pulling all of the trades in the array above that back down to fill that gap, removing the last element of the array and changing the size by one. And then I'm going back in the int i loop again to look at the next trade in the list. And that is everything for tracking the trades. And so to go back to my little loop where I'm showing the results, uh, yes, age data, open time. Now this is because when I'm initializing them, remember, I'm setting the age data to just zero values. So if I have an element in the array that has age data, open time of zero, but the live, but it's a live trade, then it must be new. And if the close time on a piece of information, or if the close time on an element is not the same as the age data close time. Now, the reason I didn't say not equal to zero, because if I didn't call this remove closed trades, that will trigger every time after the trade has been closed. But just by saying if it's different to the age data close time, then I'm only going to print this line when a ticket is closed. Now, you might be testing for other things. You can test for uh, changes from the order type. You can test for the volumes changing. You can test for all kinds of things. I'm just doing two very simple examples here to show how you can track that. Now I've put these functions directly into my indicator. As I said, this could be a, an expert advisor. Uh, you would probably want to move all of these into a set of library functions. So. That's it for tracking trades and identifying when a trade has changed, been created or closed in MetaTrader 4. Now I've just switched over to the MetaTrader terminal and I'm going to run that indicator just to show how that works. And let me get the journal open. Um, I'll just execute a trade, just buy. And you can see there, new trade opened. I'll execute a sell now, just to see that happen again. And again, new trade opened, and there is my ticket number. Uh, let me just do that again, so I've got three of them. Right, so now I've got three trades opened. If I close one of these, then I'm getting the ticket closed message. Hope this has been useful to you. If it has, leave a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, more of these quick tips, then remember to click the subscribe button. And if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when we release new videos. So until the next time, thank you for watching.